Hello and welcome to the uh, CCNA preparation guide brought to you by Eduonix. In this video we're going to have a look at some uh, some guidelines that Cisco have released called the, the newer Cisco SBA for government guides available. This is uh, it's a great guide. It's on IPv6 but it's Cisco's um, introduction and how to implement IPv6 successfully. It's worth a read. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of guidance in here that you won't use, but after this we're going to look at something which is almost like a beginner's guide on how to implement IPv6 on a previously IPv4 network. So let's just have a look at the IPv6 addressing guide. Um, there's a, a good a good few things in here to, to teach you the basic principles about IPv6. The guide addresses how to successfully integrate IPv6 into a network that already has an existing IPv4 address space, and how to handle multiple IP address ranges within the network, when you should use a provider-independent IP space, and how you should set up the IPv6 subnets. You should read the guide if you're an agency with uh, 100 to 1,000 connected employees, an existing network, and the need for guidance on how to add a new service to the network and concerns about IPv4 space and uh, exhaustion and the the uh, the need for guidance on how to transition to IPv6 addressing. So, the main introduction. So when I say we here, I'm talking about Cisco. They've designed the, the Cisco SBA to be in easy to, to configure, deploy and manage. The, the architecture provides a solid network foundation. It makes deployment fast and easy. It accelerates the ability um, to easily deploy additional services and it avoids the need for re-engineering of the core network. And by deploying the Cisco SBA, your agency can, um, can gain a standardized design tested and supported by Cisco. Optimized architecture for mid-sized agencies with up to 1,000 users and up to 20 remote sites. It's got a flexible architecture to help ensure easy migration as the agency grows and seamless support for quick deployment of wired and wireless network access for data, voice, teleworker and wireless guests. Security and high availability for agency information resources, servers and internet facing uh, applications. Improved WAN performance and cost reduction, though um, the use of WAN optimization, sorry, through the use of WAN optimization, and simplified deployment and operation by IT workers with CCNA certification or equivalent experience, and Cisco Enterprise class reliability and product design for mid-sized agencies. So here is uh, is the main kind of guiding principle. Here, uh, you have the user services at the top, which is going to be uh, voice, video, and web meetings. You then have network services, which is security, one optimization, and guest access. And then you have network foundation, which is routing, switching, wireless, and the internet. The Cisco SBA can be broken down into um, three primary modules, um, yet independent components for um, any kind of mid-sized agency uh, will be network foundation, network services, and the, uh, the user service, as we mentioned there. So an IPv6 addressing technical overview. So IP version 6 is a new IP protocol. It's designed to replace IP version 4, which is deployed today and used throughout the world. The current IP version, v4, has proven to be very robust. It's been easily implemented, it's been interoperable, and has stood the test of uh, scaling an internetwork to global utilities, the size of the internet as it is today. However, the initial design of IPv4 didn't anticipate the following conditions. The rapid growth of the internet and the exhaustion of the IPv4 address space. The need for simpler auto configuration and renumbering of network devices. The requirement for security at the IP level. And the need for better support for real-time delivery of data, also called quality of service. The lifetime of IPv4 has been extended with new techniques such as private address spaces with network address translation and although these techniques seem to increase the address space and satisfy the traditional client server setup they fail to meet the requirements of IP address growth. 
you need to reach um, always on environments such as uh, residential internet through broadband, cable modem or DSL, precludes IP address conversions, pooling and temporary allocation techniques. Also, the plug and play capabilities required by, uh, required by consumer internet applications further increase the address requirements as well. The designers uh, and users of the internet of the early internet couldn't have anticipated the recent rapid growth of the internet and the impending ex exhaustion of IPv4 address spaces. The IPv6 address protocol meets the current requirements of the new application and the never-ending growth of the internet. IPv IPv4 address spaces makes uh, more addresses available, but it must be approached with very careful planning. Successful deployment of IPv6 can be achieved with existing IP4, IPv4 infrastructures. Um, with proper planning and design, the transition between IPv4 and 6 is very, very possible. The Cisco SBA is based on feedback from many customers and partners, and Cisco has developed a solid network foundation with a flexible platform that uh, doesn't require re-engineering to add overlay services that emphasizes ease of use. Uh, adding advanced services during or after the core network deployment is simplified. Time and expense is not wasted re-engineering the network because the network is designed from the start to be flexible. So the IPv6 address format. IPv6 addresses use 16-byte hexadecimal number fields separated by colons to represent the 128-bit addressing format that makes the address representation less cumbersome and error-prone. So this is an example of a valid IPv6 address here. Additionally, to shorten the IPv6 addresses um, and make the address easier to represent, IPv6 does follow a few conventions. The leading zeros in the address field are optional and can be compressed. For example, the following hexadecimal number can be represented as shown in a compressed format. So 0000, zero, zero, zero equals 0 in compressed form. Therefore, this address here in compressed form also reads like this address here. So as you can see, we've basically done the, uh, the 130F and then we've got a dot 0 colon 0, which is that has been shrunk down to 1 and so has that. A pair of colons represents successive fields of zeros. However, the pair of colons is only allowed just once in a valid IPv6 address. So, for example, uh, this here has been cut down in, com in compressed form. Uh, so just two colons there uh, would represent this here. And this example here would be FF01000001, which would also equate to FF01 colon colon 1. An address parser can easily identify the number of missing zeros in an IPv6 address by um, addressing, or sorry, by separating the two parts of the address and uh, filing the, the zeros until, sorry, in filling the zeros until the 120 bit address is complete. However, if two zeros are placed in the same address, then there's no way to identify the size of each block of zeros. The use of the colon makes many IPv6 addresses very small indeed. So now network prefixes. In IPv6, there are references to prefixes which, in IPv4 terms, loosely kind of equate to a subnet. The IPv6 prefix is made up of the leftmost bits and acts as the network identifier. The IPv6 prefix is represented using IPv6 prefix or a prefix length format, just like an IPv4 address is represented in the classless in the inter domain routing CIDR notation. The prefix, sorry, the slash prefix length variable is a decimal value that indicates the number of uh, high order contiguous bits of the address that form the prefix, which is the network portion of the address. For example, that address there is an acceptable IPv6, IPv6 prefix. This bit here. If the address ends in a double colon, then the trailing double colon can be omitted so that the same address can be written as this one here. 
In either case, the prefix length is written as a decimal number 64 and represents the leftmost bits of the IPv6 address. A similar address in IPv4 would be um, you know, xxx.xxx forward slash 16. And IPv6 address types that we're going to be looking at. There's um, major differences in the IPv6 requirements between IPv4 and IPv6 hosts. An IPv4 host typically uses one IP address, but an IPv6 can have more than one IP address. So there's three major types of IPv6 address. You've got the unicast address, which is an address for a single interface. A packet that is sent to a unicast address is delivered to the interface identified by that address. You have an anycast address, which is an address for a set of interfaces that typically belong to different nodes. A packet sent to uh, an anycast address is delivered to the closest interface, as defined by the routing protocols in use and identified by the anycast address. Multicast is an address for a set of interfaces in a given scope that typically belongs to different nodes. A packet sent to a multicast address is delivered to all interfaces identified by the multicast address in the given scope. 